In 2021, a leading news website of India wrote this about Oyo. And at the time, many people agreed with this statement. This famous and promising hospitality chain struggling. Hospitality company Oyo has reported that its global revenues have dropped by 50 to 60 percent. Several employees in the US and in other international markets on furloughs and temporary leaves. This is a message from uh, founder Ritesh Agarwal. Announced that it would lay off 2,400 employees, which were roughly 20 percent of its total employees. Just the year before, Oyo had posted its record loss of 13,123 crore rupees. Yes, that was pure loss of almost $1.6 billion in just one year. And what's even more shocking is that it wasn't the pandemic year. The year I'm talking about was the financial year 2019-20. So all that happened before COVID-19 hit. In addition to these bad financial numbers, the company was also fighting many legal battles in the court. First, there was this case filed by the Federation of Hotel and Restaurant Association of India, which accused Oyo of manipulating revenue numbers and hence lying to hotels about actual revenue figures. There were cases filed against Ritesh Agawal too, where the hotel owner claimed that the management of Oyo changed the terms of their agreement and that it was done with criminal intent. And finally, Oyo's biggest shareholder, SoftBank, was pressuring the company to go public so that it could recoup its investment from the company. Following this, Ritesh Agarwal did file for the IPO but had to later withdraw it because of concerns over its profitability and regulatory challenges, as multiple organizations had appealed to cancel Oyo's IPO. Now, these were pretty big challenges, and to think that a 28-year-old founder can get through them was very ambitious. But today in 2024, things are looking way better for the company. It has posted its first ever profitable year with a net profit of 229 crore rupees, and is projecting three times of this the next year to 700 crore rupees. So the question is, how did this happen? How did one of the most promising startup of India first went through such tough times and how did the founder along with his team get out of it? This is what we'll discuss in this episode of Backstage with Millionaires. To understand the issues that Oyo faced few years back and how did Ritesh Agrawal save the company, we need to first learn a bit about Oyo's early days as that would really set the context. Oyo was started in 2012 by 19-year-old Ritesh Agrawal. His initial idea for the company was to build a listing platform where people can find and book budget hotels near them and he named it Oravel Stays. This idea was loosely inspired by Airbnb which at the time was an up-and-coming budget stay startup in the US. Now, Ritesh's journey was not like a other typical startup founders we see today, people like Dipinder Goyal or Bhavesh Agrawal. He did not attend any top universities like IIT or IIM and also did not have any strong financial backing from his family either. If it wasn't for this guy, Ritesh won't be where he is today. The guy's name is Peter Thiel, a Silicon Valley entrepreneur and investor. He made his fortune by founding PayPal and later becoming one of the early investors in Facebook. Peter is someone who does not believe in formal education and likes to back young and hungry founders who want to build something. To do this, he started something called Thiel Fellowship in 2011, where he would select 20 to 30 young people every year to drop out of college and build something. And he also gave them seed funding of $100,000 to do this. Now, Ritesh got extremely lucky and received this fellowship as soon as he started Oravel Stays. And what would have taken him years to learn and figure out, he learned in just a few weeks. One of the key insights was that finding and booking a hotel in India was not the main problem. It was the quality of stay. And if he could use technology to standardize and give a quality experience to the customers, he could build a very big business. This pushed Ritesh to rethink his entire strategy. He started by changing the company's name to Oyo and used the money he got from Thiel Fellowship to hire his early team. For the first couple of years, Oyo's business model was very simple. It would own board a hotel partner and take care of the entire guest experience. Right from giving a smooth booking to giving essential services like clean sheets, free Wi-Fi, AC and running water. In addition, Oyo would also do the marketing of that hotel. And for doing all this, Oyo just charged a small commission of 15 to 25 percent depending on various factors. And now that the hotel booking experience was so much better than before, hotel owners had seen an increase in bookings and hence total income. So they didn't mind paying this commission to Oyo. By 2016, Oyo had grown significantly. It had a presence in 100 Indian cities and had over 5,500 hotels on its platform. Also by now, it had become India's largest branded hotel aggregator. But this was the time when Oyo was about to change completely. And this person is the main reason for that. His name is Masayoshi Son, the founder of SoftBank. 
one of the most valuable companies in the world. In addition to SoftBank, Masa also manages the largest tech-focused VC fund in the world called Vision Fund. To understand how Masa influenced OYO, we need to learn a bit about his investment philosophy. See, Masa believes that technology will change humanity forever and he wants to invest in the most disruptive companies and visionary founders. In the past, he had invested in legendary companies like Alibaba, Uber and ByteDance. And with a similar philosophy, he invested in Ritesh Agarwal and his company. Oyo. His vision with Oyo was that this company could disrupt the global hospitality industry by standardizing and scaling budget hotels. With this vision, SoftBank first invested in Oyo in August 2015. And over the next four years, it invested over $1.5 billion into the company. By doing this, SoftBank also became the largest shareholder in Oyo, having close to 47% stake. And because of this, SoftBank now controlled the major decisions of Oyo. Now, once Ritesh Agrawal had the backing of SoftBank, he started to think bigger and aim for global scale. Oyo did this by taking a two-pronged approach. Firstly, in order to onboard more hotels, it launched something called a minimum income guarantee model, where the company told new hotel partners that irrespective of how many bookings they get, Oyo will give a fixed income every month to them. This motivated many hotel owners who had initially been hesitant to join this young new company. As for the minimum guaranteed income, it varied based on several factors but in most cases, it was 50% to 200% higher than what these hotel owners had been earning before. Another issue that hotel owners faced earlier was that there were so many fluctuations in their business. In peak seasons, their hotel was overbooked, but in off seasons, there was little to no demand. And when Oyo promised them a fixed predictable income, these people could not say no. For example, this Bengaluru-based inn owner claimed that he was promised 7 lakh rupees every month by Oyo as a guaranteed income. And of course, all of this money came from investors, particularly SoftBank, whose sole aim with Oyo at this time was to capture as much market as possible. The next thing that Oyo did after SoftBank came on board was aggressive expansion. It first started with India. And according to this article, the company hired a sales team of thousands of new people whose job was to talk to new hotel owners and convince them to join Oyo. The next target was the global market and the company started by expanding to Southeast Asian countries first. Its promise of a guaranteed income was loved by hotel owners in other countries as well. And by 2019, Oyo was present in 80 different countries. One market where Oyo saw unprecedented growth was China. See, China at the time was a market similar to India. Its budget and mid-tier segment were highly fragmented. There were many small independently owned hotels with inconsistent quality and a lack of brand standardization. It provided Oyo with a great opportunity to replicate its success from Indian market here in China. And by the end of financial year 2020, Oyo had partnered with over 19,000 hotels in China alone. This number for context was more than India itself. A similar aggressive strategy in other countries in Europe and North America made Oyo the third largest hotel chain in the world in terms of total rooms. It was only behind Marriott and Hilton. Now from a distance, this rapid expansion looked good and it reflected in the company's revenue as well. Oyo's total revenue increased from 32.8 crore rupees in FY16 to 13,168 crore rupees in FY20, more than 400 times in just four years. But this growth came at a big expense. See, as Oyo grew from being a small India-based hotel aggregator to one of the world's largest hotel brands, the company made many changes to how it ran. The first step was to fundamentally change its relationship with hotels. From being an aggregator earlier, the company now started to work on a franchisee-based model. This was done primarily for two reasons. One, to have more control over a user's experience, and second, to scale fast. But for hotels, this was a big change. See, earlier hotels were independent and only partnered with Oyo. The hotel owners had total control over prices, listing, and other management issues. But once Oyo switched to the franchisee model, it took control of the entire inventory. So now, Oyo decided on the prices of these hotel rooms and also issued a long list of guidelines which these hotel owners had to comply with. And of course, all hotel owners were not happy with these changes. Let me give you an example to explain. Let's say there was a three-star hotel, which was earlier priced at 2,000 rupees. Now, since Oyo managed the supply and hence the price, it could increase or decrease this price depending on what its algorithm thought right. 
This led to many hotel owners thinking that they were now at the mercy of Oyo on how much would their hotels earn. Next, Oyo did all this very quickly. As I mentioned earlier, Oyo set up a team of thousands of sales people to register more hotels. And as a result, their total number of hotels in India increased from 6,000 in 2017 to 18,000 in 2020. And if you include hotels outside India, then this number shot up to 43,000 hotels in 2020. That's a crazy growth in just three years. Because of this rapid expansion, the execution got screwed. See, a lot of these hotel owners did not read terms and conditions properly. They were just sold Oyo's franchisee in lieu of good business. So finally, when dust started to settle, a lot of tough realities started to kick in. To begin with, many hotels, as I said, did not read terms and conditions properly. And because of this, they failed to meet the promised standards. This led to customer dissatisfaction, and both the hotel and the customer blamed Oyo for this. The next issue was Oyo's unclarity over its revenue model. Remember the guaranteed fixed income promise that Oyo sold to many hotel owners? Well, by now, Oyo started to realize that this model does not make sense. See, what had happened was when Oyo made these promises to these hotel owners, they had overexpected the demand. And when the demand wasn't met, Oyo had to pay them from their own pocket every month. Just to give you an idea of how much money this was, in FY 2019-20, Oyo's total losses were 13100 123 crore rupees. And I'm sure a lot of money was spent for this. Oyo of course realized that this is not sustainable and they hurriedly started changing this model. Company now introduced a revenue sharing model where both parties will share the amount of total booking value. But the thing is, it wasn't communicated properly to many hotel owners, which led to protests and even legal cases against Ritesh Agarwal. And the issues that I just mentioned were not only happening in India, it was also happening in other countries like the US and China. Small hotel owners in these countries who mainly joined Oyo in order to earn a guaranteed income now got angry when Oyo changed its business model. A lot of these hotels sued Oyo in their respective countries. Now, just when Oyo was trying to deal with these many mishaps, it was hit by another blow, COVID-19. Travel and hospitality was one of the hardest hit sectors during the pandemic. In the early days, Oyo promised support to its hotel partners. But as the lockdown period extended and the demand did not pick up, the company took several measures to stay alive. To begin with, it laid off thousands of employees, both in India and overseas. This was followed by shutting down properties which were not making money. Now, these issues were still manageable, but the biggest setback company got when it faced pressure from its investors to make money, especially SoftBank. See, SoftBank at this time was going through a rough patch. Its biggest investment in WeWork had failed and it had lost almost $15 billion. And it was a personal setback for Masayoshi Son. He now had to make money from his other investments like Oyo if he had to survive. This was when Oyo, which was already running terribly bad, was forced to go for an IPO. In September 2020, Oyo filed for the IPO for the first time. This IPO wasn't accepted by a lot of people because of Oyo's irregular numbers and heavy losses. Then there were organizations like SEBI who were investigating the company for alleged fraud. For a while, it looked like things were not going to work out for Oyo and it might become another WeWork or Baiju. But fast forward to today, Oyo has posted its first ever profitable year with a net profit of 229 crore rupees. So how did Ritesh Agarwal and his team turn things around for the company? Well, to begin with, Oyo changed its entire focus from growing at any cost to growing profitably. To do this, the company first delisted thousands of old hotels which were not performing well. This included hotels which had low visitor turnout or that they had low customer experience. In addition, the company also removed hotels which did not agree with its new business model. As a result, total number of Oyo hotels in India reduced from 18,000 at its peak to 8,000 now. And what's really interesting is that it did not affect Oyo's total revenue, which is actually increasing now. This is happening because Oyo is now focusing on making more money from existing hotels. They are doing this by improving the customer experience and cutting cost using technology. To give you a number, Oyo's gross booking value or top line revenue has increased from 2.19 lakh rupees per hotel to rupees 3.9 lakh now. Almost 80% increase in just one year. Another point which I earlier mentioned was Oyo's change in its business model. 
the earlier model of guaranteed fixed income had added heavy fixed costs for the company. This has now been changed to revenue sharing model, which removes any sort of financial or other kind of pressure from OYO. Now, hotels are as much responsible as OYO to give a good experience to the customer. Next thing OYO is doing now is changing its brand image from a budget friendly hotel chain to one that is available in all segments. So, for example, for the affordable segment, the company has OYO Townhouse. For people who prefer homestays, there's OYO Home Looks. Next, for corporate travelers, OYO has two different options depending on price and location. And these are the options under OYO's own brand. The company has also launched two new brands, Palette and Sunday, both of which are premium hotel and resort chains. So, what we are seeing here is that OYO has spent last 10 years learning ins and out of hotel business. And now they're using all those lessons to get into every segment of hotel business. These changes that I just talked about were changes done in India, but OYO has taken a new approach for its global business as well. Firstly, it has scaled down from 80 countries to 35 now. This also means a bigger focus on the markets that are bringing in revenue and where the company does not have to go up against big competition. For example, the company has scaled down its business in countries like China and double down on countries like the UK and Nordic countries. As a result, while OYO's overseas base has shrunk, its revenue has actually increased. Now, these were the changes that the company has already done, but there are many ongoing things which look very promising for the future. The first one is tapping first-generation hotel owners. See, one reason OYO faced so many difficulties in the past was because it was dealing with legacy hotel owners. These were the people who are not too comfortable with technology and made the process too complex. The company is now looking looking for young first generation hotel owners who OYO can train to run their hotels more smoothly. For this, the company launched a dedicated accelerator program and is already running 1000 hotels under this project. Next thing OYO is doing is tapping future growth areas which look promising. And one particular area which I want to mention here is spiritual tourism. See, post COVID, India has seen a massive rise in spiritual tourism. It is happening firstly because people are looking for new ways to reconnect with themselves and two, the government has focused focused on this a lot through schemes like Prashad and Swadesh Darshan schemes. According to a report by Ministry of Tourism, in 2021, 67.7 crore people participated in spiritual tourism, which generated a revenue of $7.9 billion. In 2022, this number increased to 143 crore people and a revenue of $16.2 billion. And according to the same report, this revenue could grow 4x to $59 billion by 2028. So, OYO has realized that this is a massive opportunity and the company has jumped on this trend pretty early on. In January 2024, OYO announced that they will be opening 400 new properties to cater to this new demand. The focus will be on cities like Ayodhya, Varanasi and Puri. And because of these efforts, OYO is projecting a net profit of 700 crore rupees in FI25, almost three times of FI24. And the company is already on track to do this. They did 132 crore rupees in net profit in quarter one of FI25. So it'll be really interesting to see where they end this year at. In the end, I want to hear from you. What was your biggest takeaway from this eventful journey of OYO? Share your thoughts in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.